Hello everyone. Thank you very much for coming back to my channel and thank you very much for those who are new viewers for visiting my channel. Today I'm going to talk about defining children's literature and childhood which is um, based on the book chapter written by Karen Lesnick Oberstein. Are you ready to listen about defining children's literature and childhood? Okay, here we go. The definition of children's literature lies at the heart of its endeavor. It is a category of books, the existence of which absolutely depends on supposed relationships with a particular reading audience, children. The definition of children's literature, therefore, is underpinned by purpose. It wants to be something in particular because this is supposed to connect it with that reading audience, children, with which it declares itself to be awfully and purpose purposefully concerned. But is a children's book a book written by children or for children? And crucially, what does it mean to write a book for children? If it is a book written for children, is it then still a children's book? If it is only read by adults, what of adult books read also by children? Are they children's literature? Okay. So there are some questions about this. Attempts to dismiss categorization and definition of text as a side issue which should not be an end in itself are very problematic when it comes to children's literature. How do we know which books are best for children if we do not, do not even know which books are children's books? For this is what, is what children's literature means in its most fundamental sense to every critic who uses the term. Books which are good for children and most particularly good in terms of emotional and moral values. The meaning of children's literature as books which are good for children in turn crucially indicates that the two constituent terms children and literature within the label children's literature cannot be separated and traced back to original independent meanings and then reassembled uh, re to achieve a greater understanding of what children's literature is. Within the label, the two terms totally qualify each other and transform each other's meaning for the purposes of the field. In short, the children of children's literature are constituted as specialist ideas of children, not necessarily related in any way to other children. For instance, those within education, psychologically, psychology, sociology, history, arts, or literature. And the literature of children's literature is a special idea of literature, not necessarily related to any other literature, most particularly adult literature. Having said this, one of the primary characteristics of most children's literature, criticism and theory is that it assumes that the terms of children and literature within children's literature are separable and more or less independent of one another and that they are directly related to other children's and literature. Critics often make use of or refer to theories from education, psychology, sociology, history, arts, or literature in buttressing their opinions. But in every case, they transform the material from other disciplines to fit their own particular argument. This complexity arises partly because the reading child of children's literature is primarily discussed in terms of emotional responses and consciousness. Children's literature criticism, for instance, 
actually devotes little systematic discussion, but many random comments to cognitive issues such as the correspondence between vocabulary list composed by educational psychologists and the vocabulary levels in books or to levels of cognitive development thought to be necessary to understanding the content of a book. These areas are regarded as the province of child psychologists or as appropriate to devising of strictly functional reading schemes, which are not held to fall within children's literature. Uh, the problem of children's literature, criticism and theory occur within the confines of the field of tension established by the contradictions and gaps between the assumptions that children and literature have self-evident, consistent or logically derived meanings, and the actual use of children and literature within children's literature is very specific and often variable and inconsistent ways. Attempts to divine children's literature and reading child, those also operate within this field of tension. It may be noted at uh, this point that children's literature constant underlying assumption of the child as a generic universality connects children's literature criticism all over the world. Children's literature criticism in different cultures is united by speaking of the child as an existing entity, even though this existing entity may be described differently in different cultures as it is described differently within cultures. In examining various attempts to define children's literature, we find a constant assumption of the existence of the reading child, that is, the assumptions that there is such a thing as a unified, consistent, objective child reader, together with the capacity for knowing it that each critic claims for him or herself. This holds true for all children's literature critics, even if they claim to be literary critics of children's books, because the literary is defined in terms of how the book is supposed to affect the child. Examining the processes of divining children's literature and the child, which is essential to its project, also illustrates the extent to which differences of opinion exist and threaten the coherence of children's literature criticism. In other words, how and why the definition of children's literature and childhood matter so much to children's literature critics. So far, uh, it's all about uh, the definition, uh, the process of definition of children's literature. Uh, perhaps you have some ideas about it. So should we continue it now? All right. Uh, the definition of children's literature and childhood are those and matched within the discourse of children's literature. They mutually qualify each other. Tension and problems arise within children's literature criticism because children's literature critics implicitly assume that there are independent, essential definitions of literature and childhood which will only meet to the mutual benefit within children's literature and its criticism. However, has not less than the, um, however, Children's literature and children's literature criticism define themselves as existing because of and for children. And it is these children who remains the patient of and therefore the source of conflict for children's author and critics. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, viewers and listeners, wherever you are, uh, please let me know what uh, one of the points that you can get about defining of children's literature please write in the uh, comment section thank you very much for uh, participating and watching or listening this video
Thank you very much for your attention and see you again in the next related video. Have a great day.